All right, it's time to get this underway. An Activision burst onto my screen. Dark Rain, a feature of war. And there's gonna be a little bit more cinematics, because why not? Gotta have more cinematics. And someone set up the bomb. Hundreds of years have passed since the Tograns lost their leader to the war between the Freedom Guard and the Imperium. In the years following the destruction of the Stratos 7, the Tograns civilization has been ravaged. The few survivors have set off in hopes that they may find a new refuge and rebuild to carry on the words of the first believer Togra. Speaks to you now in my time of need. 
I can only hope that the followers still remember, but without you, my fate is sealed. I've discovered something wondrous which may secure the fate of our people for all eternity. Only I am trapped here on a world torn by the Imperium Freedom Guard War, and I fear it is not long before I fall victim to the terror which surrounds me. This probe has been programmed to search for believers, should some tragedy occur which would seal my fate. Locked inside is a one-way portal to the past, yet it can be used only once, so you must prove yourself. If you still believe, then accept this challenge and return to save me, for I will bear our people to a new plane of existence. Probe interface established. Authentication TB-303 verified. Accessing probe data stores. Data indicates probe origin as a small planet in the SK system. Elapsed time since probe launch estimated at 213 years. Automated file encryption active. Initiating encryption key interface. All right, so that's basically uh, sort of the gist of Dark Rain right there. You've, um, you're basically a follower of Togra, and uh, it's been 215 years since he basically died. But you're in the future, and he has the ability to uh, send you back in time to save him, so that you, he can lead the people, your people to um, glory and greatness and all that. Anyhow, the rest of this, um, this uh, um, video is just basically going to cover basic training and advanced training here. I didn't really get to show this because of the music, but it's kind of sort of important because it'll sort of give you a gist of what this game's all about and how it's like basically different from like Grand Conquer and StarCraft and all that. So I figure it's worth doing. So the first thing here is combat engineering. Here's your chance to learn the basic movement fighting. You'll experience how di different terrain types affect your units as you explore the map. You'll also get to build your base, crank out some troops, and get into a firefight. Prepare for your training, recruit. Follow instructions precisely as given. Any deviation will result in failure. Notice the construction rig. This unit is used to construct all buildings. Select the unit. You'll notice that the menu on the right now displays the facilities which you can build. With your rig selected, click on the top left facility. This is your headquarters. Now move your cursor over the main map window and you will see an image of the HQ. Find a spot where there is enough clear space and place the building. You were told to select your construction rig and build an HQ. Once completed, your HQ will allow you to build more construction rigs so that you can continue to build your base. And yeah, this guy's a really cheeky fellow. Construction complete. New units available. Now that your HQ is complete, build three more construction rigs by clicking three times on the picture of the rig in the build menu. Notice that you can queue up the second two rigs before the first has finished building. You can tell how many units are queued up by the number above the unit image. Notice the build menu on the right now displays a list of units. These units are red, indicating that you do not have the necessary facilities to build those units. To find what facilities are required to produce a particular unit, hold your cursor over the unit image for a second and the list will appear showing the prerequisite facilities you currently do not possess. Unit completed. Now build a tailon power generator, a yes. training facility, and an assembly plant. These facilities are the basic building blocks of your war machine. If you can't place one of your facilities, move your rig away from other facilities to find more available space. As you move your troops around, you will notice that they uncover portions of the map that you haven't seen before. Black areas on the map indicate regions which have not yet been explored. Gray areas are regions which are not currently within line of sight of any of your units. This information will prove to be very important when planning your battles. Enemy units will not be visible if they are under the gray or black areas. So the more you can see, the more efficient you'll be at eliminating your enemies. Construction complete. Construction complete. New units available. Construction complete. New units available. Now build a Guardian, and head north through the pass. Unit generation in progress. Unit completed. Ready. 
Doesn't that sound just like, you know, uh, Warcraft or Starcraft, that little voice there? You will notice that you've been given three new units. These units have been modified to demonstrate how different vehicles will behave on the variety of terrain types you will encounter. Now select your guardian along with the new units and move them to the plasma turret which has just appeared to the north. Notice as they cross the different terrain types they each behave differently. The tracked vehicles will perform well in mud. The broken rocks or porous surfaces will substantially slow hover vehicles. Both the wheeled and tracked vehicles will gain a speed bonus from the road surface. Notice that units will always attempt to take the quickest route, which means they may not always travel in a straight line. Here, the hover vehicles gain an advantage. They can travel over water, while the others must take the land bridge. Now follow the road to the north, to the next plasma turret, which has just appeared. Notice that the area you can see is restricted by the hills on either side of you. Elevation will play a major role in your strategic planning, since you won't be able to see what's on the other side of hills or past large obstacles, unless you move to where your units have an unobstructed view. With all your units selected, click next to the camera tower to the north and observe the path which your units take to get there. Notice that the infantry walks straight along the road over the hill. Infantry can climb any elevation and can therefore cross the steep slope which the road goes over. Both the tracked and wheeled units took the slightly sloped path just to the left of the road. This is because they cannot cross steep slopes. Steep slopes will always be bordered by the terrain you see stretching around the right portion of the hill. Notice that the hover vehicle went all the way around the hill to the left. This is due to its inability to handle anything other than the slightest changes in elevation. Now you will see a small enemy installation. Build some more units and eliminate the facilities. So basically, you know, completed. part of the reason I'm doing this tutorial is just so you can get an idea of like, you know, the sort of like, you know, me mechanics that are basically in play here. Basically, they actually make it so that the units sort of matter um, with like the sort of map design. Infantry are really great, of course, for like going across like, Unit you know, um, hills in like hilly, like, you know, uh, crappy terrain and such. If you have hover vehicles, they can go like across water, but they'll suck against like, you know, um, like hilly completed. stuff. Also note, by the way, that there's like, you know, this like sort of queuing system here. I didn't really go into depth with this, but, you know, this is like, you know, inspired by Command & Conquer. And you can tell that it has a lot of improvements over like Command & Conquer. Like, you know, we have like the menu here, um, or not the menu, but you have other stuff that you can basically do. As opposed to, say, uh, Command & Conquer. Unit completed. Send these guys up here. Destroy the base immediately. If you can't accomplish this simple task, <clears throat> you are of no value to me. Of course, these guys are also hover vehicles. Unit completed. And of course, all of them have to fall around the slope here. And here comes the infantry. Enemy engaged. I engaged the enemy, apparently. That was unintentional. Unit completed. And of course, these infantry will have no problem with getting across these hills and such. Enemy engaged. of value after all. Mission successful. So there's the first one, basically, you know, it gives you a gist of like, you know, um, you know, a little bit of building um, tutorial there and just a little bit of moving tutorial. Resource management. So the scrub is back for more. Don't know if that makes you persistent or stupid.
Okay, I'm supposed to teach you to manage resources. I'll follow orders exactly as I give them, and we'll get along just fine. All these buildings the Synod has been nice enough to let you use need power. Right now, your base is underpowered. Check the power bar in the bottom right of your console. It's empty, and that's bad. I've given you some credits to start with. Grab a rig and build a Talon power what generator. What do you want? Come on, Sparky, get that power generator up and running. Uh -huh. Power critical. So yeah, Talon power generators is how you get like power for your structures. Now when your power's low, the minimap don't work, your units are produced slower, and the turrets don't fire as fast as they should. <laughs> Let's just say you're screwed. Construction complete. All right, you're still short on juice, though. You could build another generator, but that'd be a waste of money. This one's still got plenty more capacity if you pump some talon right into it. Below your base is a crapload of naturally yeah. occurring talon. Take the freighter from the power generator Ready. you just built and go find Ready. the talon. If you got the freighter selected, when you put the cursor over the talon, you'll see the collect resource cursor. Click on the talon, and the freighter will start hauling loads to your power generator, and its power output will increase. Low power. All right, you got enough power now. You should notice that the minimap in the lower right corner of your console just came online. War is just like politics and dating. The most important thing is money. Everything you build costs you credits. You get credits by selling water. Those knob-headed Imperium bastards have poisoned all the surface water. So the only fresh water left is in underground springs. Now here's a few more credits. Build a water launch pad near the spring north yeah. of your base. Launch pad, launch pad. I said build a launch pad. This guy isn't as bad as the last guy, just so you know. Construction underway. When the launch pad is finished, the freighter will move to the nearest spring in your line of sight. The freighter will keep making runs on its own after that. Very nice tutorials, I will say this. It's one of the nice things about this game. Construction complete. I like it. Now you got some water coming in. The water won't be launched off-world until the launch pad is full, so sit tight and wait for the freighter to haul a few more loads. Hang in there, Chief. <laughs> it takes four full freighter loads to fill the launch pad, and you'll get your money when it's full. Now, water won't always be easy to come by. Most of the time, you'll have to scout out a spring so your freighter knows where to go. That sound you hear is an Imperium attack. And there are two times when the enemy will attack. When you're ready for them, and when you're not ready for them. Your laser turret should be able to hold them off. Yep, you see your turrets are damaged. Hit the repair button at the top of the screen. Uh, that's the one that looks like a wrench, smart guy. You'll get a repair cursor. And click on the damaged buildings, and they'll begin to repair. Like all good things, repairing costs money. Now, if you ever need credits before your launch pad is full, hit the sell water button in the special functions menu. Whatever water is in the pad at the time will be picked up, and you'll get the money for it. But it'll cost you. Tanker pilots don't like to make pickups if you don't have a full load. All right, scrub, we're sitting in butter now. Let's go bounce some heads. Start cranking out raiders and spider bikes. And there's an Imperium base to the west. When you've got enough troops, go flatten it. Unit completed. Yep. Unit Another completed. just go kill the enemy right away tutorial. Unit completed. Where to? Hit it! Unit completed. And yeah, you can set like waypoints for you to basically output units to. There was actually a lot of innovative functions with this game. Hey, meat! You gonna take out that Imperium base or you just gonna keep schmucking around?
Unit completed. Unit completed. All right, that should be enough. Let's roll. Ready. That's quite a few troops, I think, to be throwing at an enemy. Yeah. Ready. Yeah. I know such as like little, you know, destruction images. Nice work, Slick. You ain't as dumb as they told me. Think you might be ready for some real combat. Now get the hell out of here. Yeah, I noticed that the sound effects are just a little bit loud. All right, so that's basically the um, the like, you know, early stuff. Let's go into the advanced training. Okay, scrub, let's get to work. Do everything I tell you, when I tell you. Get cute with me, and I'll bounce your sorry can out of here. Select that group of spider bikes. Now hold Where down to? the control key and hit the number one key. The bikes will be assigned to group one. Now select the raiders. Set to hold go. down the control key and hit the number two key. The Raiders will be Group 2 now. Now hit the 1 key and the bikes will be selected. Hit the 2 and the Raiders will be selected. <laughs> Ain't technology great? You can have up to 10 groups, one for each number key. Have both groups meet at the camera tower on the island below them. Right away, right away. Ah, uh, you seem a little confused there, Chief. Move all your troops to the camera tower to the south. All right. Let's try setting up some waypoints. Yeah! Hit the 1 key to select your group of spider bikes. Now, click on the Paths button on the top right of your console. This will bring up the Paths menu. Select the Add Waypoint button, then click near the bridge to the east. You've just laid down your first point in a path. Now lay down a few more points over the bridge and onto the island with the repair stations. Now hit the Go button. The bikes will move along the points you Let's laid move. out and stop at the last one. Good. You can set up a path quicker with the tab key. Hit the two key again to select your infantry. Now, press tab and hold it. Lay out a path by clicking a few points over to the island where your bikes just went. When you let go of the tab right key, your raiders will automatically execute the path and head over there. All right. Now click the Basic Advanced toggle at the top of the Paths menu. On the Advanced setting, you will see a number of new options. Set the Path Direction switch to the far right. That's a looping path. Now hit 1 to select your spider bikes and lay out a circular path around the two repair stations. Hit the Go button Let's and move. watch how the bikes patrol around the buildings. Very impressive. Now to save a path, you can only have one unit on the path selected. So select just one of those spider bikes. Now, hit the save Where path to? button and the path around the repair stations will be saved. It'll be called Trail 1. Click on the name in the current path window and type in a new one to rename the path. 
Now you can set other units on your saved path. The box to the right of the Save Path button shows all the saved paths. The Current Path window shows the path that's selected. Now the path you just made should already be selected. Hit the 2 key to select your group of raiders and click the Go button. The raiders should start circling the repair station with the bikes. So basically you can set up patrols and stuff like that in this game. Make it so your units will follow like these patrol paths. Okay. Knock that off and move all your units to the island directly to the north. Squad Let's one. roll. Let's move. All right, Ace. One more hoop for you to jump through. Select one of your bikes and send it to the island to, to the far northwest with the headquarters on it. And don't guide right it. Right away. Just click on the island and let it find its own way. Enemy engaged. Now yeah, listen, Meat, we can't have you wasting good equipment like that. Take one of your bikes and set up a path to the set HQ to that avoids all enemy defensive installations. That's it. When you get one of those spider bikes to the HQ, we're done. Right away. Even you should be able to pull that off. So yeah, basically you can use paths basically to avoid enemies like this. I'll set that like little waypoint and let's go follow it. So like the pathing is, is pretty good, but you know, this is where like waypoints can be better. Just make sure they don't take nice the there, path that will get them killed. Mission successful. New AI controls. This is a really fun one. This mission will focus on unit orders and behaviors. I will provide everything you will need to complete the objective, so do not try to build or sell anything. Pay attention and do exactly what I say, or you will learn nothing. Open the orders menu by hitting the orders button at the top right of your console. Orders are preset unit tasks that allow a unit to scout, harass, or search and destroy. Units will carry out orders until you command them to do something else, or they are destroyed. Select the scout runner I have provided and click on the scout button in the orders menu. Select your unit and click the scout button. Observe how the unit searches the map, revealing unexplored regions, but does not attack enemies that it encounters. Destroyed. Objective complete. Now look to your right near the top center of the map, and you will find a plasma tank. Select the unit and click the harass button in the orders menu. Notice how the unit will search out enemy units and make hit and run attacks on them. Harass is similar to scouting, except that your unit will attack an enemy that is within range, and then move away when threatened. Units with turrets have a great advantage in harass mode, as the turrets will continue to fire while the unit is retreating or moving past an enemy. Objective complete. Now look in the upper right corner of the map. Select the plasma tank and click the search and destroy button. Observe how the tank locates enemy units and attacks them. A unit on search and destroy will not move again until it has destroyed the enemy unit that it has encountered. Notice by the way how this fog of war. So it's not like Command and Conquer with it's like, you know, uh, constant shroud. Good, you have completed the first half of this mission. Now look near the bottom left of the map. If you haven't already done so, click on the advanced tab in the orders menu to reveal the advanced settings. Unit behaviors allow you to customize the way your units will respond in combat situations. The variables are pursuit range, damage tolerance, and independence. Select the plasma tanks and set their pursuit range to low. Standing Move the tanks low. towards the bottom of the map and stop at the camera tower. Always. Move to the camera tower and stop. Always. Observe as the enemy approaches that your units will fire, not fire. 
Change the pursuit range setting to medium and wait for the enemy to approach again. Your units will now pursue the enemy for a short distance and then return to their position. Now set the pursuit range to high. Your tanks will now continue pursuing their targets and targets to destroy. Objective complete. Look to your right near the middle of the map. A vehicle with low damage tolerance will automatically return to the nearest repair bay when its health bar becomes yellow. Select the plasma tank and set damage tolerance to low. Now, destroy the entire first group of enemy units below you and observe this behavior. Good. Now set damage tolerance to medium and the unit will retreat when its health bar is red. Attack the second group of units below. Continue attacking until all units are destroyed. Now set the damage tolerance to high and attack the last group of units. Your unit will continue attacking and will not automatically seek repair. Basically, He'll keep fighting until he'll keep fighting until he dies. Unit destroyed. Objective complete. Look to the right center of the map. Select the plasma tank and set its independence to low. With the unit selected, click on the camera tower at the bottom of the map. A unit with low independence will ignore the enemy when given a move command. Enemy engaged. Now, change the independence setting to medium. Send the unit past the turret again, back to its starting position. A unit with medium independence will fire at the enemy as it passes by. Enemy engaged. Good. Change the independence setting to high. Send the unit past the turrets again. A unit with high independence will abandon its move order to engage an enemy. Objective complete. Well done, recruit. Your work here is complete. Mission successful. And that's it for the tutorials. So I basically want to show those like you know tutorials along with like the uh, opening um, like cinematics to sort of like give you an idea of what Dark Rain is all about. Um, the cinematics basically give you the story. The tutorials sort of give you an idea of like what makes this different from Command and Conquer. But at the same time, this is you know very much a Command and Conquer like game. It has that sort of sidebar. It has a lot of like the uh, like you know feel and controls of like Command and Conquer. And how do I get back out here? And there we go. Actually, I'm just do this on the desktop, so let's just do that instead. So, I'm basically going to be trying to do a little bit more Dark Rain, I think. Um, you'll be it, basically seeing like the missions and basically what makes them different from, like, say, Command and Conquer and StarCraft and all that. Basically, they have, they have their own vibe um, and basically how they're designed. I really like it quite a bit because it's kind of neat with the, like the, how they like this game is thematically set and then how the missions are thematically set as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.